My name is Craig Henderson here with Apex Supercritical. Today we're going to talk about a demonstration on our 2005 LD series extraction systems. Um, before we get started though, I want to discuss a little bit about the 2005 LD versus our desktop unit versus our 5000 PSI series. The 2000 series refers to the max pressure that the system will run. So this system will run between 900 and 1900 PSI, whereas our 5000 series will run between 900 and 4900 PSI. Um, the 5LD versus 20LD refers to the size of the extraction vessel, the amount of material the machine can hold. So this is a 5 liter vessel and we make 20 liter vessels as well. You can do any combination of a 5 or a 20 liter vessel. Um, so, so a lot of people will start with a 5 liter vessel and then later on if they decide they need more processing capacity, we'll add another 5 or add a 20 liter vessel right here. We already have the bolt holes in the side, it's a really simple install will come out and install that additional vessel whenever you're ready. Um, so let's get started. The 2000 series system, just like any other system, comes with three components. You have your system itself, where the extraction, where your material go in, and where the extraction will take place. You have a chiller, which maintains temperature throughout the system. All these vessels are jacketed, so we have water running through every single one of these vessels. That's what these blue lines are for. So water will leave the chiller. It controls and monitors the temperature in the extraction vessel. Down here, we have a remote probe that's connected to the chiller. So our temperatures in here are monitored and controlled um, to set our extraction parameters. The rest of the water lines are going to places like our pump over here, our diaphragm compressor, or in our separation vessels, just to maintain temperatures throughout the system. So nothing's overheating or nothing's getting too cold. Um, that's what the chiller is used for. Then we have our compressor. It's either this system uses uh, it's an electric 220 volt diaphragm compressor. Very efficient. It's extremely uh, low maintenance system. Um, and the way it all works is that you will come over here when you're ready. All right. So before we hit start, I'm going to discuss how everything works, and then we'll be able to actually see it happen. What happens after you hit start is the CO2 gas from your CO2 bottles goes to the pump, the pump then sends that CO2 and compresses it over here in our extraction vessel. In here, where our plant material is at, we'll have a liquid or supercritical CO2 flowing across that plant material, acting as a solvent. We'll then bring that liquid CO2 over into our separation vessel. Inside here, we have an orifice, valveless expansion technology. It's this little tiny hole right here. So that liquid CO2 comes in and shoots through this little tiny hole. It's this orifice which is holding back 1200 PSI or 4000 PSI CO2 and maintaining 300 to 400 PSI gaseous CO2 in here. CO2 is a gas in here, your oil then falls out into the collection cup down here. And then we send our gas through one more, make sure we have all the oil out of it. And then we send the gas back to the pump and then the cycle continues over and over. It's a continuous flow and it will last anywhere um, from one hour up to 48 hours, depending on how much material you're trying to process. So when you buy a system and it arrives at your facility, you get three boxes, three crates. This comes all in one crate, the compressor will come in a crate, and then the chiller will come in a crate. All you have to do to connect the three pieces is connect the water lines and a couple of gas lines. And then I'm going to discuss electrical real quick on this system. Our 1500 PSI 1 liter system, our desktop version that you see on the price list, is all 110 single phase electricity. This system, our 2000 series systems, are, you have an option between single or three phase electricity. And it's, if you choose the single phase route, we have a 220 volt chiller, um, 110 volt system, and a 220 volt single phase compressor. Our 5000 PSI series are all three phase. Uh, they require a 220 volt chiller, 110 volt system, and three phase electricity for the large air compressor. So now I'm going to discuss starting this thing up. So what we do is before we hit start, we'll come over here to our extraction vessel, open it up. We supply a funnel, comes with every system. We will use this. We will load our plant material in here. I have a grinding video that shows me actually loading an extraction vessel. Um, if you'd like to see that video, it's also on YouTube. We recommend coffee ground size uh, dried plant material go in here. After we load our material in here, after we load our material in here, 
close this. And on our new systems, we've made some recent design changes. All you have to do is go hand tie. So we'll pull this down. That's all we gotta do. Now we're gonna come over here and we just hit start and it walks us through everything. So first it asks us to enter our target pressure between 900 and 1900 PSI. Right up here, I've got 1400 PSI entered. I'm gonna change that down to 1200 PSI for this run. And I acknowledge. Tells us to enter the number of run hours. Number of run hours is determined by how much plant material you put in your extraction vessel and what pressures and temperatures you're running. If you're running at higher pressures and temperatures, typically these systems will process about a pound per hour. If you decide to run at lower pressures and temperatures, the system processes about a pound every two to three hours. So since this is just a demonstration, I'm just gonna put one hour in. Check chiller set point, so it's reminding us to set a temperature over here on our chiller. Right now we have it in Fahrenheit. We're gonna turn the power on. It's about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, if you're running lower pressures and lower temperatures, 55 to 75 is good temperature range. If you decide to run higher pressures, higher temperatures, we recommend around 100 degrees Fahrenheit on the chiller. After we've set our set point, we're gonna acknowledge. Now it's reminding us just to check everything. So it's, it's telling us verify our separator vessels are secure. The, these are our separator vessels. We're just checking each one of these clamps. Make sure they're all tight. There should be about an eighth to 16th inch spacing in between these two, uh, these tri-clamps. We're also just gonna check real quick, make sure the fittings up here are secure, which they are. We'll acknowledge. It's reminding us to make sure our extractor is secure, which we already tightened earlier. We'll acknowledge. It's telling us to close valve 10. So the only manual valve on this system is right here. This will be opened at the end of every run to re vent the remaining pressure stuck in the system. And then we close it right before we start a run. We'll close that. Go over here, acknowledge. It's now telling us to open our CO2 bottles. So I'm gonna go and open both these up. This is gas fed, food grade CO2. We do not recommend using liquid down to uh, CO2 bottles. Now when I acknowledge it, the system's gonna take off and do its thing. So now as you see up here, it's showing that it's filling the extractor. Here's our extractor pressure. This corresponds to this extractor over here. We have our separator pressure. This corresponds to both of our separators because these are tied together. And up here we have separator temperature. This is corresponding to the temperature inside of our separator. What's happening now, as you see, it's filling the extractor. So once this pressure reaches our set point, it will then go into forward or reverse flow mode. All that means is that the CO2 is either entering the top of the extraction vessel, leaving the bottom, or entering the bottom, leaving the top. Every run, that uh, flow direction changes just to keep the filters on the top and bottom from clogging. If you find that top to bottom flow or bottom to top flow works better for you, then over here on our management screen, we have the option of reversing. It's actually, it's not there yet because the system's not in flow mode, but there'll be an option for reversing uh, the direction of flow. So you can actually control whether you're flowing top to bottom or bottom to top. So it's still filling, as it says. So we'll let it keep filling. I'm gonna show you real quick what these do over here. We have a logo screen. So if you ever just wanna keep your extraction parameters private, you'll come over here, it just shows a logo screen. Code entry screen, so if you decide to finance a machine, every month uh, you have to enter a code um, to keep the machine running. We have a valve control screen. This is just used for debugging and troubleshooting. Alarm screen. This is to track anything that has happened on the machine. We also have the message select screen. These are all the text messages or emails you can have sent to your phone. So you can essentially track the entire run via email or your phone. Or if there's an issue, it'll notify you. That's what the ethernet cable over here on the side of the machine is for. We plug straight into the internet. This also gives us the ability to send you software updates. We can send those software updates to you free of charge as long as you're plugged into the internet. We have the maintenance screen. This is to keep track of hours on everything. We have four resettable functions. 
can keep track of your pump hours, your cleaning hours, how many times the system's been started. And then we also have its master hours and minutes up here. With the manual screen, I'll come back to that in just a minute. We have the I.O. screen. It's also just a troubleshooting or debug screen to let you know what's going on at that moment. Most of these uh, other screens over here, you hardly ever use. The manual screen, though, is pretty important. In this screen, at any point, we can change CO2 bottles. If the system notices the CO2 bottles are low, a yellow box will come up here and remind you to change the CO2 bottles. You'll acknowledge that box, and then you'll swap out your bottles. Or you can manually do it. So right now, I can hit change CO2 bottle, and at any point, I come over here right now, I close these, I take these off, you know, as you see, the system's still running, so it doesn't stop the flow of the system, but it does isolate these bottles. So you can take these off, put new bottles on, open them back up. Once you got your new bottles connected, come back over here. It just says when bottle change is complete, press here to resume normal operation. So boom, bottle changed. We also can recover CO2, so at any point, um, if we want to stop a run early, we'll just hit recover CO2. And it puts our CO2 from the system back into the CO2 bottles. A lot of people want to know how much CO2 it recovers. It recovers up to about 90% of the CO2. You can also, we have a clear clogged orifice function. This function is used for either A, clearing that orifice I showed you, this little tiny hole. Usually on the very first run, there might be a little piece of debris from manufacturing that can clog this. So instead of having to shut down the entire system, you would hit clear clogged orifice, which I'll go ahead and do. Um, you would hit clear clogged orifice, what happens, as you notice down here on these gauges, these gauges will pump down, and then once they reach 100 PSI, you'll vent it, and then it allows you to get in here and uh, clean this out if there's a clog. The other most common reason people use the clear clog orifice function is to harvest oil mid-run. So say you wanted um, to run the machine at a lower pressure, lower temperature, let it run for an hour or two, hit clear clog orifice, come down here, harvest your oil out of your collection cup. So that first hour at a lower pressure, lower temperature is gonna be your turbines, your lighter oils. Um, you'll, you'll harvest those off, put your collection cup back on, resume normal operation. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave clogged orifice mode. So now it's back in normal operation. Um, you would resume normal operation, and at that point, you can come in here and change your pressures and temperatures at any time during the run. So I could crank this up to you know 1900 PSI, raise my temperatures on my chiller, and then get more of a thorough extraction. So I've, a lot of people will do that. They'll do a real short run, low pressure, low temperature, get their terpenes off or their lighter oils off. Then they'll reinstall their collection cup, crank up pressures and temperatures, and to get max yield. And then, so now the system's just gonna run. As you see here, our separators are between 250 and 350 is where we want them to be. And it's just gonna sit here and continue to run. Uh, as I described earlier, we have liquid CO2. Um, it's liquid at this pressure and temperature in our extractor. And that would, right now is flowing over our plant material. And then we're bringing that over here. And our oil is you know, separating out of the CO2 in our collection cup. Um, now you pop away and uh, the machine, once it reaches its end of its run time, so right now we have an hour selected. So once it reaches its hour point, it'll go into recovery mode. At that point, it takes about 30 minutes or so to recover all the CO2 back in the CO2 bottle. And then you can shut it down properly, which we'll discuss here in a minute. One reason we recommend having this either closer to the machine or right behind the machine is so we don't have such long gas pipes right here. During recovery, uh, we can only pull everything down to about 100 PSI. So the longer these tubes are, the more leftover gas is going to be in the system. So you're kind of wasting CO2. Uh, people always ask if they can put this in another room. And they could, but keep in mind these pipes are going to be so long, they would be wasting a lot of CO2. Um, as you can see, this isn't that loud. And it doesn't put off a lot of heat. It's really not hot to the touch. This line here is a little warm. Uh, so we recommend keeping this to the right behind the machine maybe face this way next to the machine. The only other components we have is small silent air compressor back here. The other component of the machine I didn't discuss earlier was this small little air compressor. Um, what it does, it sends air through these pink lines, so it's actually controlling all of our valves in the system. So in here, all of our controls are Allen Bradley. All this is done in-house in Ohio. So 
everything here we assemble in Ohio. We do all of our own programming. Um, everything in here is extremely universal. A lot of people are familiar with Allen Bradley components. Every single one of these cards are gonna be here uh, for a long time. So five years from now, if something in here goes wrong, it's all extremely universal and all extremely replaceable. So now our system, it hit its hour mark. Um, and then it went into recovery. So you can see a little dial, a little message box came up that said recovery of CO2 has begun, touch here to acknowledge. Even if you're not here, you don't need to touch here to acknowledge. But if you are here, go ahead and touch. What's happening, it's pulling down CO2 and it's slowly putting everything back into the bottles. The reason the CO2 recovery process takes up to 30 minutes is because we, we don't want to take our liquid CO2 out of our extraction vessel and send it straight to our bottles. There could potentially still be oil in that liquid CO2. So we like to run all that liquid through our separators, turn it back to a gas, make sure the oil falls out, and we send that gas back to the bottles. So that process is a little slow, just getting it all through that uh, orifice. Once it gets down to 600 PSI, we know it's a gas in here, then things go really fast. That CO2 from here will go straight into the bottles. So this is what will happen. If you're not here and you walk back in after a few hours after recovery had finished, you'll see that there's still some pressure stuck in your separators. No big deal. Um, everything's turned off. System's not running. The compressor over there is not running. Your chiller will continue to be on. It's not a big deal. So just turn that off. Then you'll come over here and do exactly what it says. So recovery complete. Close CO2 bottles. Close CO2 bottle. We're going to open valve 10. So this is that vent valve down at the bottom. And then we'll acknowledge. All remaining pressure, all remaining pressure will then be zero. So that's it. That's the end of the run. Um, you would now come over here, take this off, suck out all your dry plant material. We recommend a shop vac and coming in from the top. You could take off the bottom and let it fall out. It's just cumbersome and we recommend just doing everything from the top. Um, it reminds you on the screen, cycle maintenance required. All that's referring to is just, you know, check a couple of these lines, make sure you didn't have oil carryover, make sure you've harvested your oil, put new plant material in, then you acknowledge and it's ready to start again. So after you load new plant material in here, take out your oil from here. You might have some stuff on the walls you'll scrape off. We actually send a scraper tool with every system. This is used, small one and a big one, for cleaning these vessels if you ever do get stuff on the walls. Some people, we were talking earlier about high pressure, high temperature, low pressure, low temperature. Some people prefer to run lower pressures, lower temperatures, because um, you'll get a lot of THCA, 99% pure THCA buildup on these walls. Uh, if you run at a higher pressure temperature, everything's going to go down to the bottom. But with those lower temperatures, you get that buildup on the walls. We recommend keeping that separate from your oil in the cup. You would take this off, get out your oil, and you'd use this hard scraper tool to break off that THCA on the walls. And that can be used to make 99% pure glass-like non-stick shatter. So now we're going to show you how you would collect your oil out of this collection cup and how you would get the hard stuff off the walls. You'll come right down here. We have these blue water lines with quick connects. So we want to disconnect this cup from the rest of the system. We're going to disconnect it there, disconnect it here. So now this cup is separated. We will then use our 5 8 ratcheting wrench that we send with every system to take off these tri clamps. Before we start undoing this, we want to make sure valve 10 is open and that our pressure is zero, which it is. And you can also verify up on the screen. Take these tri clamps off. This process between runs, people always ask, how long does it take to pull out your old material, load new material, harvest your oil, and reattach everything? And uh, it typically takes about 30 minutes uh, between runs. Take this off, and our cup comes off. And this is where our oil would be. We just did an empty run, so there's not much in there. You can see a little residual oil down the bottom. Um, so then you would take this cup over to your lab station or a little workbench, and we have tools like these spatulas that would help us get out our heavy thick oil. We'd put into a Pyrex dish or a beaker, 
then we could take it to go do post-processing on it. There's the collection cup. Here. I'll run this side, please. To get the hard stuff, now we're gonna take off this top piece. This would be if we had hard stuff built up on the walls, we'd wanna get in there and scrape it off. We'll disconnect our thermal couple, undo these two lines. So now, I'll take this off. And as we were talking about earlier, that little orifice, so here's the orifice on this one. Um, you can look down in there and see inside of the separation vessel. If we'd done a run and we kept separator temperatures low enough, around 20 degrees Fahrenheit, we would have a lot of hard stuff built up on these walls. Um, there's a lot of pictures you can look at on my Instagram account or even on the Apex website that shows that hard stuff. And it even, we even talk about the process of converting that hard 99% pure THCA into glass-like shatter. At this point, we would use our hard scraper tool and we'd scrape off that hard stuff. We'd put a little stool underneath here, a Pyrex dish, scrape that hard stuff into that dish and clean it out. If we wanted, if we were running the same material over and over, it's not necessary to clean this thorough every time. Um, if you are running different strains or different botanicals, then you would want to spend a little extra time and get this spotless on the inside. We send, we send a small bottle like this that we recommend using acetone or alcohol, and you would just get this, spray it down the walls, have a dish down at the bottom to collect it, and then you'd wipe it off and dry it down on the inside. Typically, there's not going to be any oil over here. Um, the reason we would know if there was oil is if we opened valve 10 at the end of the run and oil was blowing out, we would know then we had oil carryover. At that point, we would take the time to take this apart, check in here and get it all clean. But typically this only gets opened maybe once a week just to check and see if it's dirty or not. Uh, the maintenance I was discussing earlier talks about these lines here. We would look in it. Um, if it looks real oily in here, we might take this line off, run a little alcohol through it. And we would also take the time to take this line off and run alcohol through here. I have a great video I made um, earlier that shows me cleaning this line and you know proper maintenance on the machine. So I'm not gonna go too deep into maintenance right now. So now it's time to reassemble everything. Put that back on. Put these clamps, these clamps have a notch in them. We're gonna put the notches opposite of each other. As you can see on this one over here, I have a bolt on this side and a bolt on this side. Do that, we're gonna put this stuff back together, then we're gonna reattach our collection cup. We'll reattach these lines, put our thermal couple back in here, and then we're essentially done. And then we would reload our material, tighten this up, and hit start for the next run. Um, if you have any questions about what I just talked about or anything regarding post-processing, feel free to email me at craigh at apexsupercritical.com and I can further answer any questions. We also offer live demonstrations here in our Denver shop. Uh, it's by appointment only, so you'll contact Tina at tinah at apexsupercritical.com to set up uh, demonstrations. Thank you very much.